So spawning here in the top left hand position of Heavy Rain, representing my insanity, it is the blue Terran player, Jack G. And his opponent to the bottom right, the purple Protoss, representing GG, Majestic. It's a best of five, so being a game down isn't the end of the world. It can quickly get leveled out and just become a best of three. Still, games can be lost. And that's really where you have to look at things. Quite interestingly, Jack G can lose now. Two games in a row. And still be in with the shop. And that's a big win for him because at low levels of play, or at even standard levels of play, having a game to lose seems like a bad thing. Oh, like, oh, if I lose, that's terrible. But for Jack G, it's a huge thing because the higher caliber of player you have, or the closer the game is, the bigger risks need to be taken to get an advantage. Jack G played game number one looking pretty solid. And therefore, if he did take a risk now, it would give him an even bigger advantage. And he may take a big risk knowing that he could afford to lose a game. Alternatively though, he could sit there and go, do you know what? Playing standard, playing safe in map number one, got me a fairly comfortable win. I'll do the same thing yet again. Refinery and barracks coming down yet again from Jack G. Probably going to be for a Reaper. There's a lot of cliff area on Heavy Rain that can be utilised. Meanwhile, double gases out early for Majestic. Map number one, he put two probes in each of these gases. Looks like he's, at least initially, going to be doing that same thing. One thing that could be done with three gases, or three probes in each gas, is a proxy stargate. Beautiful position up here to proxy stargate. You're basically in your opponent's base. But it is often scouted, although it's somewhat hard to scout due to how far out it is. You can end up having to run a long way, and if that's a single marine, it's not a massive problem, but it's awkward. Some players just don't bother with it. So, Cybercore, four probes and gas. Meanwhile, Jack G, opting not to go Reaper this time. Instead, adding on an early reactor may still go double Reaper. That's a possibility. Certainly something that can work nicely. Um, I'm not entirely sure on the timings of everything there. Brief bit of lag, unfortunately. But yeah, this is all looking fairly cool. Getting the react down should actually get two reapers out slightly quicker than obviously getting a barracks and then just pumping two out next to each other. Um, and it's less of an investment as well. So yeah, this is looking pretty pretty fly. Nexus coming down at the natural base now of Majestic, who has opted yet again to skip his zealot. Starting Mothership Core production. Key difference being Jack G has two reapers out this game. This is not just for a bit of fun. He's actually going up to three. This isn't for scouting for Reapers, this is for killing. This is probe murder about to be coming up. This Mothership Core may be able to fare off against one, maybe two Reapers, but getting four out is a big ask. Even the Stalkers can start to struggle against just that volume of units poking in. And especially on Heavy Rain with so much cliff, it can be very effective. So already, some probes taking a bit of fire. A few more getting pulled off just to come and try and fight this out of Stalker. Not being chrono boosted, there's not enough energy to chrono boost at the moment. The Reapers do need to be a bit more careful. They're racking up some good kills though. Four or five worker kills already, may even get a sixth one. Just gotta be careful that Stalker, backing away, trying to play a little bit of dance. Nice little exit route here, if needed. Smart move, just pulling one of those Reapers back into poke and prod. Having to back away as fast as possible though. Nice little game here. Little bit of health regen coming through. One Reaper may very well die. The second one getting insanely low, but this is drawing the Stalkers back, allowing two more up in the main base just to go to town. So it was calculated losses from Jack G there. Mothership Core, both no overcharging, but nine workers killed and one Reaper still gets away. Jack G giving himself a four worker lead, nice and early on, despite his opponent having an earlier natural base than he did. Mules compound upon that advantage economically, and Jack G is pumping out additional barracks with the double tech lab, so should be starting stim, and most likely concussive shell. Could also be combat shield, but with marauder production, concussive shell is generally considered the smarter choice, so you can chase down stalkers. Mothership core, bit low on energy, only 34 there. That causes it some problems, because if there is a move out with just a small group of infantry, that would generally be used for baiting a Foden overcharge. If there isn't a Foden overcharge, 
suddenly that little push is really scary. Stalkers and stuff die very quick and it's never something that you really want to deal with. Jack team moving very far forward with this small group of units as well. Combat shield, uh, sorry, we do see that concussive shell rather coming down. Uh, we've got Stimpak nearly finished too and everything really looking square. So Jack G is playing a bit more of a standard game at this stage. Not going for anything crazy, not taking big risks. Those two real happy, oh sorry, the four Reapers that did so much damage really looking good. Beautiful reaction from Jack G there, just seeing those horrible, horrible observers and sniping them off nice and quick. So big little win. Marauders, Marines moving across the map, going to be aiming for this Nexus as soon as possible. Reaper coming in just trying to harass a little bit more, saying just what's there to defend and the answer is so little. The Mothership Corps will have enough energy for another Photon Overcharge, so this is mainly just for baiting that Photon Overcharge out. No sign of a starport as of yet, Engineering Bay is coming down though. Jack G could just go for this, but with Photon Overcharge there, it is going to be quite tough, but has no choice but to go for it now with some beautiful force fields. The main really should be the target, but with a sentry and force field energy remaining, Jack G has to back out. He could wait this out though, and still be in a solid spot. A Colossus trying to come through. Another probe dies to these Reapers. 11 in total now. That's magnificently good for Jack G's Reapers. And yeah, this is not really where you'd want to be as a Protoss player. Jack G is firmly ahead, even though the workers show as equal. The two mules give Jack G effectively a kind of 7 to 10 worker lead there, so that's really nice for him. Even though the gas income is slightly higher for Majestic at the moment, that's to be expected and also required. Jack G doesn't actually need that much. Small little bit of lag coming in here, unfortunately. We've also got a proxy, a proxy Nexus coming out. I'm not quite sure what's going on there, but Majestic is now probably going to lose most of his stuff, unfortunately. A Colossus doing some nice damage from the back lines, trying to pick off this army as effectively as possible, but without extended Thermal Lance, Marauders do equal its range, it dies very quickly, and with basically no army supplies remaining, apart from these Warpins, this is looking very unfortunate now for Majestic. He may be able to hold off this push, but he's going to lose two sentries in the process, losing most of his army. This one lone marauder sprinting about like mad should be able to get some nice damage down. And with these reinforcements coming through, there really isn't anything here that will stop much. A Colossus coming through ASAP. This proxy Nexus will stop um, Jack G from being able to win the game super quick anyway, because he'll have to kill that if there isn't a GG. And he won't know where it is either because, well, it's not going to be a point. GG's called, and Jack G wins game number two making him a match point to take this finals.